What's up guys? I just wanted to check in today and show you guys uh, a portion of my farm which some people would uh, disagree with. Um, it's basically a corals that are not supposed to be fragged or I guess some people would say that. Um, right here is a huge plate coral that I got a few years ago. Uh, this is like my hand for reference. I'm, I'm not even in the water yet, but I'm gonna pick up one of these and show you guys what it looks like. This is that, uh, I don't remember the type of plate. It's not a diaceres, but it is the Fungia, uh, I think it's a cyclone or something. And uh, I just pissed this one off, but yeah, this is not a plate that you're supposed to be able to frag according to most people, right? But I just went with the saw one day, cut it, and you can see every single quarter rounded out. And this thing is a monster, like, for size rep. Like, this is, this is a huge, huge chunk. And they all developed mouths. They're all really, really healthy. They're stinging me right now. But yeah, and then uh, this one, I don't know if it has like a sting or a bacterial infection or something. It's got like a little bounce forming right here. That's pretty cool. But yeah, and a lot of people, uh, they, they ask me how I'm doing that, right? Like how I'm, I'm fragging corals that like people say you can't frag, right? Um, and basically what I try to explain is that corals can be surviving and then they can be thriving. And when you have a thriving coral that's doing better than, than it should, I would say, and it's in an environment where it's really able to thrive, you're gonna be able to do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do, like cut a plate in half four times and, and it won't have a mouth to heal for so long, but it still ends up surviving, right? Uh, another example right here is an Acan Pachycepta. I uh, cut these right down the middle and then sometimes they develop extra heads on the side. This one's got like four heads on it. But yeah, these are uh, really cool corals that like people don't really aquaculture because they, they get scared of and a lot of the times the only way you can get an Acan Pachycepta like this is just on fresh import. And uh, nobody wants to buy fresh import stuff for exuberant prices that people are selling them for these days, right? Um, and that brings me to my uh, next thing I wanted to show you and kind of what I was uh, I got the inspiration from a guy named Ryan Cunningham Chummingham's Reef um, a really cool guy he's really into paving the way in this hobby and doing things that people don't normally do uh, he was fragging master schoolies so I reached out to him a few years ago and I purchased one and I cut these master school, look at this tiny little master scully. And I cut these scolies. I ended up having like 15 of these master scolies uh, um, about a year ago. But obviously this room that I was setting up was super expensive and I was just trying to sell stuff, right? And now I'm only left with two <laughs> and these are tiny. So maybe in a year when these grow back out, I'll start cutting these master scolies in half again. But what I noticed is that when you cut corals like this, the colors that they display later on, like look at that. Let me see if I can zoom in here. It's got that orange stripe on the cut because you can see this is the side that healed over. And you can see that it, it just developed orange, more orange, right? And when you cut these corals, they just get better colors, like in the area you cut, specifically the schoolies. And the people will, will, will kind of be like, why? Why are you fragging schoolies? You know, like you're ruining it. You're, you're making a nice big round schoolie turn into a little ugly booger. And in my opinion, it's like, this is so much cooler than a $1,200 master scully that, you can, that, that, a, that a vendor can import 50 times a month. And 50 other vendors can get the same scully and, and they're gonna label it master grade scully, right? And most likely in a year, it's gonna die in, in someone's tank. Not saying, not saying that the, the vendor is gonna kill it, but uh, schoolies can be difficult long-term, especially for hobbyists, just because like, they're seen as like an easy, easy coral, which they are, but wild corals have a reputation of not being as easy as, as initially perceived, right? Um, so if you're able to aquaculture scolies, cut them in half, let them heal, cut them in half, let them heal, you're gonna have a much more resilient scoli, right? Um, and they round out, they heal. Like they're, uh, they're very, very capable of surviving. Uh, and those plates I showed you guys in the beginning of the video, 
Well, first let me talk about these plates, these ugly looking plates right here. These have been dying for months and I finally figured out why. They had a uh, bristle worm, both of them had a bristle worm underneath uh, the glue that was, I guess, irritating them and they're coming back. The right one is a TCK flamethrower plate and the left one is a insane plate and they are just boogers and they're not doing good, but they're coming back. And then this is the plate that was in my sump. That is a little frag on a 1.25 inch plug that I cut off the lip of the plate. It had no mouth. It developed three mouths ever since I cut it and it's fully rounded out. So this is just like an example of how resilient these corals can be. But like I said, don't try this if your corals don't look like they're as healthy as can be. Like for example, if you have a Ghani and you cut Ghanis and you lose 50% of your frags, don't go try to cut scolies because there's obviously an issue that needs to be addressed. If you're cutting scolies, you're gonna have a way higher chance for that scolie to die than for example, a Ghani because Ghanis wanna grow, right? Scolies don't necessarily wanna grow new mouths and round out. They want to just stay where they are and get fatter. So I would really uh, recommend that you make sure your tank is beyond stable and it's in a better environment than, um, or the best environment you can possibly provide because like if your corals are just struggling but they're alive and growing, I wouldn't recommend, uh, wouldn't recommend trying to cut the uncuttable, some would say. And by uncuttable, I don't mean like, oh, I'm, I'm doing crazy stuff, cutting corals that shouldn't be cut. Not at all what I'm trying to say. It's just like, it, it's perceived as you're not supposed to be cutting those types of corals, right? And, and people, I even have people frown upon it. Like they, they ask me, why are you doing that? Like, just you're ruining a nice coral, but I don't know. In my opinion, it's, it's totally different. Uh, and last, I just wanted to show you, so that was a big plate I got a year ago, and that one uh, is doing great. But I wanted to show you guys this plate right here. It is having no light, but it is sick. It's got a purple splatter, blue splatter, a little bit of like gold, and it's fully orange. This plate is crazy. I don't wanna pick it up because it'll shrink up, but this is gonna be another plate that I'm gonna start cutting in half. Uh, yeah, Just maybe show off the sump a little bit for you guys. Don't mind that that frag of amaze balls because we all lose corals. Don't worry, I'm not perfect. I still lose some corals. But yeah, here's the sump for you guys. The white balance has always has an issue in here for some reason. Um, but yeah, that's my take on fragging corals that you shouldn't frag. And one more thing I wanted to touch bit back on is like people saying that you lose 50% of the Ghani frags. I saw that in one of the Ghani Apora groups yesterday, like expect to lose 25 to 50% of your Ghani frags. That's just total BS. You shouldn't be killing 50% of the corals you cut. There's, a, there's an issue you have to address. Um, here's a bunch of frags I cut and uh, the white ones are not bleached. They're just from the underside of the, of the skeleton because when the corals grow, they, they kind of, sh or specifically Ghanis, they, they kind of shade out the underside. So that's when you get these really cool white Ghanis. This one's, this one's like fully white, it's really sick. Yeah. Um, yeah, you shouldn't be losing 50% of your Ghani frags, right? There's clearly an issue going on. Maybe a pest is chewing on them after they're done and they can't heal correctly. But I, you, you gotta address that um, and not just take it as a, a lost part of the hobby, right? Part of the hobby is you lose coral, but not 50% of the corals you cut. If you're growing the coral in your tank, it should survive. That's not to say you don't lose corals sometimes. They just won't heal. Like there's a small frag back there that is not healing well. But if I'm being honest, I think that's gonna survive. I don't think it's gonna die. I think it's just taking its time to heal. But yeah, um, if you guys have any questions or any concerns or any other things you want me to cover, just let me know in the comments. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, uh, Alex Reef, just go, go drop me a follow and talk to me on there if you have any other questions. I just figured I'd tell you guys uh, how I frag. I mean, you guys already know how I frag, right? I just do witch hazel iodine. I don't do anything special. Like there's nothing, there's no technique in, in it. It's just, if you're cutting a coral with the best technique and you're throwing it at a tank that has bad bacterial populations or um, bad flow, bad nutrients, unstable, low trace elements, it's not gonna heal like 
I mean, we're not keeping we're not keeping corals most times. We're just keeping our water. So just keep your water as stable as possible, and you should be able to do everything you've always wanted to do, right? There shouldn't be anything be able, anything that's holding you back in this hobby if if you're able to keep the water uh, nice and good. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Instagram at Alex Reef, and just let me know if you have any other questions. Have a good day.